Oh, hi. Um, we're back for another video uh, about uh, the stuff that I have here in uh, random totes. Uh, so I have a lot of totes full of just random things that I have accumulated throughout the last 20 years or so, really. Um, and I'm going to go through these items with my friend Matt. And my name's Mike. And let's begin, shall we? I'm Matt. That's Matt, and I'm Mike. All right, so let's begin with some bookmarks. These are bookmarks that were made by my uncle George. Uh, he lived in Pennsylvania, and he just made like random bookmarks. Uh, like for instance, <clears throat> this one has a a quote by Donald Culross Peaty from Audubon's America in 1940. He has. Uh, a bookmark that has another quote by James Elroy Flecker from the Golden Journey to Samarkand. Some of these also had like, like here's a bookmark that has a, a list of decay resistance of heartwood. Uh, these are uh, <coughs> trees that uh, it tells you how decay resistant uh, these trees are, like the black locust the red uh, mulberry and on, on the back you'll find information about firewood the fuel value of firewood in general is in direct proportion to its specific gravity or heaviness when dry <clears throat> and it lists some different types of uh, firewood there that you can use in your daily goings on here is a this is a ferry ticket from a jet foil that I took when I was in Europe, a, a, a jet foil boat that went from uh, Dover in England to uh, Calais in France. That This is basically the ticket stub for, for the, yeah, the part of the ticket that I got for going on that ferry. Uh, next thing we have are a bunch of pages from a desk calendar that I used to enjoy uh, looking at on a daily basis. It was called William F. Buckley's 365 Words You'd Like to Know. And he was right. I did want to know these words. And Basically, on every uh, <clears throat> for every day, there's a little word quiz. Uh, for instance, this one. Uh, which of the following words can be defined as verbally informal, peculiar to a particular group, individual, or style? Is it cl cliquish, bantering, or idiomatic? I'll read it again. Which of the following words can be defined as <clears throat> verbally informal, peculiar to a particular group, individual, or style? Is it, is it cliquish, bantering, or idiomatic? I'll go with A. The answer is C. Right. Uh, and then there's a uh, explanation. Uh, the principal liquid asset is the $10,000 paid by the government. When your brother was killed, Faith, your mother, managed to get your father's signature on that check. Here's another one. This is from Tuesday, April 7th. Uh, which of the following words can be defined as disreputable, unethical, or detestable? And uh, is it A, phlegmatic, B, nefarious, or C, churlish? I'll go with B, Bill. Uh, John, the answer is B. You are correct, nefarious. <laughs> The feds charge insider training, trading and a number of other activities, some of them nefarious, some of them, well, that is one of the reasons so many people are interested in Mr. Milken. So, and I also kept track on here, evidently, of how I did. Um, I wrote, like, a record. I think I must have gotten, like, 49 correct and 48 incorrect. I'm not sure of my scoring system there because there's also a 10 and 5. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, William F. Buckley was the host of TV's Firing Line, which was on PBS from about the mid-60s until he died in, I think, around the early 2000s. He was a conservative 
TV host, but conservative not in a bad way, but, conser you know, he was very well-spoken, very intelligent. Uh, Yale graduate, uh, grew up in South Texas. If you ever get a chance to read or listen to his autobiography, I recommend it. That's William F. Buckley. Um, he So, basically... He, he, he had a, a page a day calendar with his name on it with a word quiz uh, for each day of the year. So there's another page of that. Uh, let's see. Here is a bus schedule for the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. This is Route 7, uh, the Beatty's Ford slash Firestone route. Uh, this would take you to uh, Beatty's Ford Health Center, Garden Park, Uptown, YMCA, West Charlotte Senior High School. I imagine I got this Charlotte, North Carolina bus schedule uh, when I was visiting my friend Mike Engelbrecht in North Carolina. How you doing, Mike? How you doing, Mike? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Um, that would have been, that visit was late 90s, I think. Mid-90s. I think 1996. Yeah. So, I'm glad I kept this. So, the route's probably changed, but uh, Engelbrecht, if you ever need uh, to know, you know, uh, where to, uh, what what Route 7, or where Route 7 takes you, I've got that information right here. Speaking of Ford, I have some Ford demonstration tapes for your <laughs> car cassette player <clears throat> with songs such as Somewhere headed for the future, I got lost in her arms. I don't know why you don't want me. Living in the promised land, foolish heart, and other tunes I haven't heard of. And then this one has no cover, but it has Back to the Future. Was that a song? Is that just like. Is that what the track is shine, called? Silhouette, One Moment in Time, and Flying. I don't know any of those. Is there a year on there? <clears throat> Not on this one. One Moment in Time was that Whitney Houston song that she did for the Olympics oh, okay. in 1988. No year. Cool. Ford demonstration tapes. That's probably, I guess, for Ford dealers to like play like as they were doing test drives so sure. that people could hear how the stereo the sound sounded. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> All right. The next thing we have here is an old... Kodak Instamatic camera. These were popular back in the 70s and in early 80s. Um, it, you know, you would put a roll of film in there. <laughs> There's a roll of film in here now, which is probably no good, but I've only taken four pictures on it. So, Matt, say hi. Hi. All right. And here we have... Another picture. All right. MTH. That's me. What does the T stand for? Wait. First caller. <laughs> what does the What does the T stand for? Travis. Travis. Yes. So I've just taken two pictures on that camera. Maybe I'll get them developed sometime. If anyone still does, develop those. Uh, we have a bunch of <coughs> photographs here that I took with that camera. Pictures I took in Washington, D.C. This would have been in 1988. There's a lot of pictures here. Here's an Amish, uh, the back of an Amish uh, cart. This was taken in Pennsylvania. This particular trip was in, the, like I said, the summer of 88. I went with my mom to Pennsylvania to visit my grandmother. On the same trip, we went to Washington, D.C. and New York City to uh, visit uh, various uh, family members there. So those are some of those pictures. Here's a picture of my mom. Uh, this looks like one of the pictures that, a, you know, the found footage festival would send you if you're a member of their video of the month club, as I am. Just random. I should give this to Nick, Nick and Joe. <laughs> That'd be funny. All right. Here are, here's a Pez dispenser. Garfield. That's a picture of my grandmother and my mom looking at, that looks like that was taken in New York, but I don't remember where. 
<clears throat> oh, this is a good one. So, when when we went to New York City, it was the summer of '88, and that was a, there was a writer's strike going on, and I wanted to go see a taping of uh, Late Night with David Letterman, but there was a writer's strike. So the next best thing, uh, since it didn't have a script, was Donahue. So uh, we ended up going to a taping of Donahue. This uh, episode was about transsexuals, and uh, it really was. And um, so I just took random pictures, uh, you know, during the taping. Somewhere in one of these totes, I have the ticket stub with Phil Donahue's autograph on there. Here's another shot. This one actually has Phil Donahue in the picture. And you can see some of the uh, panelists and some of the audience members in that picture. So there's that. This is a picture of the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. that we visited on that same trip. So there's that. There's lots of interesting uh, New York City pictures and uh, Pennsylvania and <coughs> D.C. pictures. This is a URL schedule. Ask me what a URL schedule is. What's a URL schedule? I'm glad you asked. The train system in Europe uh, is was called URail, and this is a timetable of the trains that you could take from one part of Europe to another. So basically, like let's say you wanted to go from Rome to from Rome to Amsterdam. If you wanted to do that, then you would turn to the page that said Roma Termini. That's the Termini station. That's the main train station in Rome. And then the Amsterdam train <clears throat> would leave at 12.05 um, p.m. These times are all in, like, 24-hour time. So there's, like, a 1,300, which means 1 o'clock. Um, so if you left Rome at 12.05 p.m., you would get to Amsterdam the next day at 9.40 a.m., this was probably a sleep... You could probably pay extra and get, like, a sleeping car. <clears throat> or you could just, uh, you know, sleep in your seat. The seats were big enough. They kind of extended, and you could make, like, a big bed out of it. But anyway, this is a URL schedule. Uh, this is really cool. I'm glad I have this. I'm sure all this is online now. But back then, you know, online was very primitive. and So if you wanted to go from Budapest to Innsbruck in Austria, you would leave at 6 a.m. and get there at 2.36 anyway. So there's that. So that's cool. I'm glad I kept that. So in the, in the fall of 1993, I spent a semester studying in Europe with the University of Dallas, and uh, that was the uh, origin of my uh, collection of random things from Europe like coins in this bag well there's a this is literally a mixed bag because well, I have some things that are not from Europe I have a two dollar bill which is a unique two dollar bill because it has some red printing on it this is I think this is from 1970s no 19 oh series 1953 uh, so this is an older two dollar bill it has um, this it has Monticello on the back. So there's that two dollar bill. Um, let's see. Also in here, <coughs> there's a 1996, this is a subway map of Montreal. Actually it's just, it, it's torn. So it's just a cover of the subway map of Montreal. I went there, I went to Canada in 96. So there's that. Here's some ticket stubs. <clears throat> Eric Clapton at Reunion Arena. That was in 1995. Uh, I went and saw the Billy Joel Elton John face-to-face -face show at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio in 1994. So there's that. Here's a movie stub, a movie ticket stub, the movie Sneakers I saw on September 13th. I think that was 1992 at the AMC Theater uh, in Irving. That's where I worked for like four years. Uh, here is a Montreal Expos uh, pocket schedule. 
uh, from 1996. This uh, that's kind of cool. I'm glad I have that. And here's some coins from Europe. Like here's here's a British pound. That's always nice. There's a pound. I have a couple of those. Uh, this one, this bag doesn't seem to have as many European coins as I thought. Although this one does have, this has a peseta from Portugal, but it's from 1998, and I wasn't there in 1998, so I'm not sure how I got that, but there's that. Uh, we might have to save the European coins for another video. I, I know that's disappointing, you know, but I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so let's do, let, let's look at what else is in here. Here's my AMC Employee of the Quarter pin from uh, when I won Employee of the Quarter, uh, probably in 1991. And then here's a here's a couple of ticket stubs from 1997 when I saw Sling Blade, possibly the best movie of the 1990s. Sling Blade, starring Billy Bob Thornton. If you haven't seen it, please do. It's excellent. And then this is a ticket stub from the movie Private Parts, uh, the Howard Stern um, semi-autobiography uh, that was made in 97. That was an entertaining movie. I enjoyed it. And then here is my class ring from 1991 at Irving High. My class ring. So I'm glad I still have that. Just kidding. Okay. All right. So there's that class <laughs> ring. And all right. Well, let's move on to something different. All right. We'll pull out more things from this bag later. Here is <clears throat> this is from Premier Video, a video store that used to exist in uh, Dallas, Texas. This was the probably the best video store in Dallas, especially for someone like me who, you know, discovered movies like in the early 90s cuz I that's when I really got interested in like um obscure movies, movies that were hard to find cuz I worked at a Blockbuster, but they just didn't have like a great selection, but Premier Video was like the big you know, if if you are into like a VHS stuff, like there's scare <clears throat> there's Scarecrow video in Seattle, there's uh, I love video in Austin. Are they still there? I thought they were. I think Scarecrow is still there. No, I love video. I thought they went out of business. Oh, they may not still be there, but you know, if if you know what that is, then you know what that is. But anyway, Premier Video was like the the cool video store back in the '90s and early 2000s where you could go and rent movies that were hard to find. Um, and anyway, for, for each movie that you rented, you would get one of these little uh, coupons. And if you collected 10, you got a free movie rental. So I have like a, somewhere around here, I have like a pretty good stack of those, but there's one. Premiere Video, unfortunately, is now closed. Um, it closed about five, seven years ago. So that sucks. Here's a Kmart bag. Nothing's in it, but I thought, at some point, it would be a good idea to keep a Kmart bag. Thank God. And then here, next thing is this tape measure that I have. So there's that. And then... Matches your shirt. Thank you. And then the next thing we have is a postcard from uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. I mailed this to my parents on in uh, July of... Um, July 25th. Uh, 1996, I think. So, yeah, there's that postcard. Okay. Um, I think this bag might have some European coinage in it. I'll just pull out a couple. Uh, oh, yeah, here's some lira. Uh, this is uh, half lira. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but there's that. There's some dollars, some paper money in here. 
Here is some Greek drachma, 500 drachma from Greece when I was in Athens. And this is also Greek money. Mm. Uh, so there's that stuff. And a Yoda Pez dispenser. And here is a harmonica that I've had for a while. All right, so there's that. And let me just show one, uh, one or two more things for this video. Uh, here's a map of Texas that I got sometime. And then this is a... Uh, what is this? This is a piece of paper that has a list of movies that I wrote. Uh, this is a letter, this is a thing I wrote to uh, Jason Hopper, uh, my friend. We used to uh, share an apartment back in like 1992 or so. Hopper, the VCR is set to tape City of Hope at 8.30. Maybe you will want to see it. It's supposed to be good. I have to close for Matt tonight. Not this Matt, a different Matt. That's not in the letter. Uh, have a good evening. And then the rest of the uh, piece of, the, the rest of the note is just a list I think I wrote to myself of movies that I'm guessing I probably wanted to see, or I don't know. I tend to just write random lists sometimes of movies that I want to see. Um, all right, well, that's enough for this video. Uh, so if you're back next time, that would be good. All right, that's all for now. And this is a pine cone. And this says, Hopper, don't forget to pay the rent today. The lady next door says she was paying hers, so I guess you... <laughs>